our live stream service for Holy Covenant for April 18th, 2021. It's good to have you all here with us today. And again, if you haven't already, I invite you to have uh, bread or a roll or a cookie or some such um, to, for our communion, as well as something to drink, whether it's wine or coffee or juice or, or water. We will be sharing communion later on in our worship service. So some upcoming events, Pints with the Pastor is coming up on Thursday, uh, the 22nd, this Thursday uh, at 6 p.m. at 6 to 8. Uh, and if you could let me know if you're coming so that um, I can, I can um, you know, be expecting you. Uh, the links are in the newsletter. Actually, the links to um, all the upcoming events are in the newsletter. So um, if you are interested, please check that out. And if you don't get the newsletter, please uh, make a, add your, uh, let us know in the comments or contact us and we will add you to our mailing list. Um, Tuesday, this coming, no, a week from Tuesday, um, Thrive with Pride, the plenary, the large group will be meeting at 11 o'clock via Zoom. Uh, we'll have a representative from the National Alliance for Mental Illness, NAMI, um, presenting um, on special, the special uh, concerns of seniors, especially LGBTQ seniors. And uh, they, that will be, um, again, Tuesday the 27th at 11. Um, our own Thrive with Pride Cafe will meet the 6th of May at 7 p.m. Um, we meet the first Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, and so you are welcome to, to join us. Looking ahead a, a little further in May, uh, we will be having a garage sale on May 15th. That's a Saturday. Uh, if you have items to donate or if you are able, um, we will especially be looking for um, uh, folks to help us out. Um, and um, and I just I just messed up here, so I am going to hang on a minute. I need to get myself back to where I need to be. Here we are. There we are, okay. Um, sorry. Good morning, Joni. Um, okay, now I am back. <laughs> um, clicked in the wrong place. So anyway, uh, garage sale, May 15th. Um, if you have items to donate or if you are able to help us out either setting up or cleaning up um, or during during the sale to you know keep things neat and to give folks uh, to take folks money and so on uh, there's all kinds of things to be done uh, so if you have even just a couple of hours on the 15th that you can give to us greatly appreciated um, we're thinking ahead this year so just in case uh, it's uh, the weather is not cooperating on May 15th, and it's rainy, um, our rain date will be May 22nd, uh, that next Saturday. Um, so if you are able to help out either date, um, well, obviously the 15th is our, is our hope, um, but keep those in your calendar. Um, we still need, we need to clean up the church now and, and finish up the last bits of, of uh, renovation. There's some work to be done in the garden, in the yard, as we come into spring and summer. Um, Mary Ann, who is coordinating our buildings and grounds work, um, is the point of contact there to see what needs to be done and when she'll be there and how you can help out. And that would be, again, greatly appreciated. Um, a friend of mine says, you know, you either have time or you have money. Um, and we haven't got a lot of money. So we need our, our members' time to, to help us out there. And indeed, our ministries are still continuing with Share Food, Share Love, um, Bomba Socks donations, 
Thrive with Pride cafes, Pints with the Pastor, and of course the ongoing expenses of maintaining a building, including things like utilities and so on. Um, so any donations are gratefully accepted and we do appreciate those of you who give regu regularly. Um, you are a blessing to us. You can give by PayPal, electronic check. Um, uh, you, it's, uh, PayPal is available on our website as well as um, um, through, through Facebook. And oh, and I want to send out a special thank you to those of you who donated to my uh, birthday fundraiser for the church. We did, in fact, raise $525 for the church. So that is every bit helps. And that's not just a tiny bit. That's a lot. So thank you all so much. Um, and as we continue to do our safe practices of masking and social distancing, uh, I, it, is, it is still somewhat isolating, feels somewhat isolating. So I am available by email, phone, Facebook Messenger, text uh, for any pastoral care needs you may have, such as, as prayer or simple conversation. Um, I am available for you. That is why I am here. So please feel free to contact me. Our opening uh, prayer this morning is by Barb Hedges Getty. My God, be my hope, my boldness, my security, my confidence. My God. Our first reading this morning is from the book, uh, from the Wisdom of Acts, chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Peter addressed the people Why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made this person walk? the God of Abraham, the God of Rebekah and Isaac, Leah and Rachel and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified Jesus, the same Jesus who was handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate, although he had decided to release him. But you disowned the holy and the just one and asked for the release of a murderer. You called for the death of the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. It is the name of Jesus and faith in it that has strengthened the limbs of this one whom you see and know well. Such faith has given this person perfect health, as all of you can see. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your leaders. God has brought to fulfillment by this means what was announced long ago by the prophets that the Messiah would suffer. Therefore, redeem your lives. Turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. And our second reading is from the Wisdom of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. Jesus himself actually stood among the disciples and said to them, peace be with you. In their panic and fright, they thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, why are you disturbed? Why do such thoughts cross your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones as I do. And when he had said this, he showed them the wounds. They were still incredulous for sheer joy and wonder. So Jesus said to them, do you have anything here to eat? After being given a piece of broiled fish, the Savior ate in their presence. Then Jesus said to them, remember the words that I spoke while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms had to be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to the understanding of the scripture, saying, 
That is why the scriptures say that the Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. In the Messiah's name, repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all this. These are God's words. Thanks be to God. All right. Will you pray with and for me, please? Our message this morning, by the way, is titled, We Are Witnesses. Creator of the universe, open our hearts and spirits to your wisdom and grace. May all we hear and speak be a blessing to us and to others. In all your names, amen. Well, I may be dating myself here, but <laughs> some of you may recall the 1985 movie uh, titled Witness. I had starred Harrison Ford and Kelly McGillis. It was actually uh, Viggo Mortensen's first movie role. Well, Ford plays a Philadelphia homicide detective named John Book who takes refuge in an Amish community after McGillis's son, Samuel, uh, who witnessed a murder, identifies another police officer as the killer. Uh, and so he, he hides there, uh, he's, he's been shot. Um, there's a, a shootout with the killer and the accomplice um, and Book is severely injured. And so he's afraid that the killer will locate him if he goes to the hospital. And so he hides out on McGillis's family farm uh, in Amish country. Um, uh, McGillis and her son are, are um, and I cannot remember, I'm sorry, McGillis's um, the character's name, uh, but he hides on their farm. And as he recovers, he comes to recognize the power of the nonviolence of the Amish way of life even though he personally cannot embrace it. And in the climactic scene of the movie, the killer, I'm not going to tell you who because I don't want to spoil it. It's a very good movie. I, re I recommend it. Uh, the killer threatens the lives of McGillis and her father-in-law. But the Amish community, who are summoned by a bell rung by young Samuel, gathers to watch. And the killer surrenders thwarted by so many witnesses. Witness, witnesses. The child is a witness to murder. Ford is, a, or John Book, is a witness to the Amish community, which in turn is witness to his courage and integrity. The many meanings of the word are all in play here. Because a witness is someone who sees something. A witness may also testify, which is also a church word, isn't it? In court or otherwise as to what they have seen or what they know. A witness then carries memory. Samuel saw the murder and recognized the killer when he saw him later. Book saw the value of the Amish way of life and wanted to protect it. The community saw the quality of Book's character, even though he was English, that is not Amish and therefore not to be trusted. This knowledge, this witness carried them all forward to ensure that the truth was established. Now, we generally think of witnesses in connection with the legal system, right, as part of a trial. And witnesses can be powerful in establishing what happened, right? 
what they saw or heard or read or learned. The witnesses at Derek Chauvin's trial, for example, have been absolutely heartbreaking as they speak of watching Mr. Floyd expire and being helpless to stop it. Their pleas falling on ears that would not hear. But witnesses bring testimony in all kinds of ways. In a church or religious context, witnesses speak of their experience of the divine, of answered prayers, of the recognition of God's presence in their lives, of acceptance of God's love for them. They're speaking of what they have felt and known. Sometimes witnesses have no direct experience of the events to which they testify, but they know the results or consequences for others. But the Holocaust has been on my mind recently, uh, partly because I recently went to the Holocaust Museum, the Illinois Holocaust Museum, which is also Holocaust Remembrance. Uh, when I went to Poland to study the Holocaust in, in seminary, our guide at Auschwitz-Birkenau was Pan Kazimierz Schmoden. Uh, he was one of the first prisoners at Auschwitz. His prison number was only four digits long. He was a very early prisoner. And he worked in the camp office because he spoke fluent German as well as, as Polish, being Polish. After the war, he was one of the main witnesses at the Nuremberg trials. And he then directed the museum at Auschwitz. He lost his parents and a sibling to the camps. He and they were arrested because of his political activities. They were not Jewish, um, but they were uh, socialist, or he was a socialist, and so guilt by association. His family was also arrested. And he was, in a sense, therefore, responsible for their deaths. And yet, although I, I take that back, he was not responsible. Uh, it was because of his activities that they were arrested, let's put it that way. And yet his outlook on life was upbeat and positive. Um, for example, that crematoria are being allowed to simply decay away. They're not being destroyed. They're not being uh, refinished. They're just letting them, letting time take its, its toll. And, and I asked him how long he thought it would take for that to happen, for them to be completely gone. And he sort of half smiled and said, quite a while, that's the best German steel. He was a witness in all senses of the word. One of our group asked him how he could bear to keep talking about what had happened there and how he could work at the place where he'd been imprisoned for so long. He said two things. One was that he did not relive his experiences. He retold them. The other is that while he was not particularly religious, uh, he felt that it was a moral imperative to bear witness to the atrocities and tragedy of Auschwitz, to carry those memories, terrible as they were and are, forward so that others would know too, and hopefully be sure that such things did not happen again. Witness. When we witness, we share the truth of what we have seen. Hans Schmolen was a witness. All of us who have been to the site of a concentration camp or to the Holocaust Museum, we are witnesses. Even if we're not under oath as we would be in a courtroom, we speak truth so that others can understand, both for good and to prevent evil. Unless we have those memories, we cannot know how to carry the good forward or to prevent evil. Jesus tells his friends they will be his witnesses. 
They are to carry those memories of him forward into the future to other people and to other lands. Their job will be to offer testimony of what Jesus meant and means to them and how his presence changed them, healed them, taught them. Talking about it amongst themselves is one thing, but he insists that they have to take it to the world and share it. This is a witness for good, the good news of the gospel, which is, of course, what gospel means, good news. Peter, James, John, Thomas, all the rest, they knew what they had seen and experienced, and their job was to witness, to testify to that experience. Peter, in his conversation with the Jewish community, is also witnessing. Now read that section carefully. Peter is telling them, his neighbors and friends and family, that while he knows they did not understand Jesus, here's their opportunity to learn more from witnesses who can testify to Jesus. He's not laying the death of Jesus at their feet. It was the Romans who crucified Jesus. Let's be perfectly clear about that. Peter is saying, listen to our witness, to our testimony, our experience and knowledge of Jesus and his teaching. A witness is powerful. While Perry Mason's surprise witnesses are legal fiction, that's just not how trials work, it is true that a witness can have a powerful effect on others whether it's in a courtroom or a church or in a life. Because we witness in many ways. Sometimes we're obvious and overt about it when we speak up in church and, and preach or protest in the street or post something on social media even. Sometimes we're less obvious when we simply live our lives in accordance with what we learned or saw or experienced. I'm much more sensitive to anti-Semitism, homophobia, anti-Roma sentiment, to prejudice and bias than I was before my trip to Poland for many reasons. I cannot allow bias and hate to pass, to not say anything or not act. It might be a minor thing like refusing to go to a certain movie or an argument I had with a family member about a poster of Eminem because it, I felt he was misogynist. Supporting the Holocaust Museum. So things that are not game changers in the larger scheme of life. But someone might see that or experience me doing that and think it may nudge them in the direction of greater acceptance and understanding. And of course, I am also maintaining my own integrity and honesty by living in accordance with my own spiritual and moral code. We witness in many ways. Think about your witness. What are you witnessing to? To hope and grace and love and healing? And then how can you strengthen or maintain it? Because, of course, witnessing is an ongoing work, isn't it? It's not one and done. Testify to the love of the divine for all creatures, to the possibility of healing, to the wonder of grace and love. Be a witness for the divine in all God's names. Amen. And now we come to the time of prayers. Uh, we offer up the prayers of, our, of the congregation, of the people, for those in need, those joys and concerns, those happinesses, as well as the griefs that we want, wish to share with one another. So if you do have uh, prayers you would like us to include in the community prayers, 
please feel free to uh, write them in the comments or in the chat box. And we will include them in our prayers this morning. So let us pray. Oh God, you come to us wherever and however we might be. No matter how much we may not believe it, we are worthy of your love and grace. Therefore, we uplift to you all of our raggedy and incomplete prayers, the ones that fall from our lips, the ones that may remain hidden within our hearts, and the ones that we might not know how to articulate yet. Dwell within us, Holy One, and speak to us from that place where the deep calls to deep. Maker of heaven and earth, the beauty of creation reveals your glory and the gifts of abundance that you have given to us. You call us to care for the world around us, just as you care for us. And we pray that you guide us in our efforts to be good stewards. We are grateful for the agreements being negotiated between the United States, Japan, South Korea, and Canada to bolster their carbon emission reduction targets in anticipation of Earth Day next week. We pray for indigenous islanders from Torres Strait, Australia, bringing a case to the UN Human Rights Committee with the hope of protecting their homes from rising sea levels, coastal erosion, and flooding as a result of climate change. Great creator, we give thanks for the large and small ways that we recognize that our lives and well-being are mutually tethered to one another. And yet so often we fall short of this calling. Instead, we scar the earth with make markers of destruction, dominion, and death. May your transformative recreating grace be made known where life is broken, abused, and depressed. God, give us a vision so that we might see the world as you see it, interconnected and interdependent. O source of light and life, we pray for the places where violence and tyranny cause so much suffering. We pray for those living with trauma and uncertain futures. May greed and hatred loosen its grip on humanity. Holy Spirit, descend upon the many corners of the world in need of your saving love and abiding peace. Our souls are weary with the news of the deaths of Dante Wright in Minnesota and the release of the video in the death of Adam Toledo here in Chicago. More black lives cut too short. Our grief hangs heavy, learning of the militant attack of a humanitarian hub in Borno State, Nigeria. Our hearts break for the families of the 20 children who died in school fire in Niger. We pray for the family and friends of the eight FedEx workers killed in Indianapolis and the victims of the, uh, the mass shooting just this morning. Shepherd, gather in your hurting and scattered flock. Protect the vulnerable, neglected, and marginalized where peace is tenuous and fear is mounting. We pray for the people of Afghanistan as the United States decides to withdraw from the country by September 11th. This marks the end to the longest war in US history but it remains unlikely that fighting within the country will end. Holy One, the pandemic still remains the backdrop to our lives. We are grateful for the arrival of vaccinations and the glimmer of hope that they bring. And yet the World Health Organization tells us that the pandemic is a long way for over, from over. 
It is hard not to be discouraged by the news that the AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccines might have some adverse side effects. Hold in your safekeeping all those working tirelessly and overtime to research these vaccines. Come alongside all who are sick, who are caregiving, who are on edge. Comfort those in places such as India and Brazil where the pandemic rages on. Give us grace, we who have much, to share with those who have little. And this is especially true for vaccines and medical care. God, sometimes life is too much for us to bear on our own. Remind us that you keep track of our sorrows, collect our tears in a bottle, and record each one. Share your peace, which surpasses all understanding, with everyone who is hurting and mourning this day. Equip us to confront hardship with strength and justice. Loving God, you came to this world to share with us a proclamation of love. Let us be extravagant in our sharing of grace. When we see the empty tomb, may we be filled with the promise of hope, the possibility of life, and may we celebrate your resurrection. May we drench the world with our outpouring of your love. Even as we pray for the world, we pray for individuals. We ask your healing blessing on Linda, on both Karens, and all those dealing with COVID-19 in their own lives or those in those of those they love. And we lift up now also the prayers of our hearts. Speak them and know that God hears. And so we gather up these prayers and offer them to God as we pray, as Jesus taught us. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we come to the time for communion. Grab that cracker or cookie, as well as your drink, as we share this meal together. My friends, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Let's celebrate this irrepressible life. Let's open our hearts to the joy and wonder of infinite possibility, of unquenched hope, of eternal resurrection. We celebrate, we raise our voices and our hearts in worship and thanksgiving to the God who lives. Resurrection happened because Christ was first prepared to die. Defying death, he refused to release his hold on life and love. So now, as he encouraged us, we choose to remember, to witness, so that we too can truly live. At supper on the night before he died, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Then he broke it 
and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, broken so that you may know life. Eat it and remember me. After the meal, Jesus took wine and blessed it too. And then he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my love, poured out so that you may know life. Drink it and remember me. So now, Lord of life, we share in this meal, we celebrate together, and we remember you. And we will continue to do this until resurrection has flooded the whole creation. May this bread and this wine become for us in this moment your life-giving body and love. And may we who share this meal be joined with you and with one another as one body united in resurrection life and sharing with all of creation in your eternal salvation. Take now these gifts and share in God's feast. Thank you, generous God, for these gifts from your table. May they strengthen us to do the work to which you have called us. Amen. So brief recap, <clears throat> excuse me, of the announcements. Um, Heinz with the Pastor is coming up this Thursday, April 22nd at 6 p.m. The link is in our newsletter. If you don't receive our newsletter, please put a comment in the comments box or email us and we will certainly add you to our email list. Uh, also, if you're planning on coming with the, to the Pines with the Pastor, let me know because, um, you know, I'm usually there from six to eight, but if um, nobody's going to be able to come, then that Freeze up my Thursday for me, Thursday evening. Thrive with Pride, our large group, um, that the support group for LGBTQ seniors. The large group will be meeting on Tuesday, April 27th at 11. Uh, we'll have a representative from the National Alliance for Mental Illness, NAMI, who will be presenting on the concerns, the special concerns of LGBTQ seniors. And our own smaller Thrive with Pride Cafe will meet on May 6th at 7 p.m. And that's a Thursday. And looking a little further ahead in May, we're planning a garage sale for May 15th uh, with a rain date of the 22nd, just in case, because Lord knows we have been rained out before. Uh, if you have items to donate or if you are able to help out. We really need folks to help on the 15th. If you can come and, and help us either set up or clean up or during during the sale to, to help with that as well, that would be, we would be very grateful for that. As a reminder, SAGE does continue to meet uh, the senior support group. Um, social, social gathering meets on Fridays at 1 p.m. and you can get the um, link from from me or I think it's in the it's on the calendar actually it's on our, our calendar and we do still need some we need some assistance um, around the church to take care of some some cleanup and some yard and garden work uh, as we move into the summertime if you're able to do that um, we would be very grateful contact Mary Ann to see what needs to be done and and to set that up uh, send the rain to you, Barb. Yeah, we'll, we'll do our best. <laughs> um, 
And don't forget, if you feel so moved to make your donations to the church via PayPal, Square, electronic check, paper check, um, we're thankful, very thankful for all your gifts and a special shout out to those who donated to my uh, fundraiser for my birthday. We raised $525. Um, so that, that hopefully will help out with our utilities uh, for, the, for that month. So just check and see if there's anything else I need to comment. Just checking the comments here. See if I missed anything. Nope, it doesn't look like I did. Or if I and if I did, I apologize. I will catch up with you later. Let us pray as we prepare to turn back to the world. Creating God, as we prepare to engage with the world again, whether virtually or in person, keep us mindful that we are your witnesses. May our testimony be clear, hopeful, grace-filled, and loving. In all your names, amen. So once again, it's been wonderful to see all of you today uh, virtually, uh, and I offer you blessings for a wonderful week ahead. Take care, and I will see you next week.